Hello, Coach Mom Dad or Self Coach Hurler. Today we're taking a look at some reps that I've been performing in practice. All right. I would like to run faster. How can I go about running faster? So this was May 26th. And sneakers on on an asphalt track. This was Buffalo Road Park. It felt it felt pretty good. And when I reviewed the session, I came to the conclusion that what I had to do was improve the lead arm movement into the hurdle. All right. So going into the hurdle, it alters. So let's watch the lead arm. Left arm coming into the hurdle. The elbow flares out. All right. And you see the shoulder rises. All right. So let's go back a few frames. Let's look at the shoulders. All right, left shoulder, right shoulder. As we go into the hurdle, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so now as we go into the hurdle, right there through hurdle clearance, that left shoulder is rising. All right, and now if we, if we see this from the side angle, we see that this lead arm gets short. It doesn't complete its full swing forward and that's subconscious bracing. All right, fast forward. This was a few days ago in June. Now this was at Chavis Park all right, on a rubber surface and with spikes on. It felt really fast, but the technique didn't feel as crisp. So hurdle one was decent. All right, moving into the hurdle. Lead arm. It's still the, the lead arm elbow is flaring to the right. I want it to stay straight up and down, like just Lu Zhang. Lu Zhang is the ideal lead arm that I'm looking for, that I'm working towards. All right. And then it forces everything to just stay short. All right. So that altering, that flaring to the left should have been a movement continued forward to open up the space between the elbow and the rib cage. And instead, it was this subconscious bracing. All right, which throws the timing off, rushes the movement off, and now the tread leg doesn't really finish. All right, and that's more of a plop to the track. All right, so there's a lot of deceleration going on here. And then here, look at the lead arm. Now it's going around and then coming forward. Now, it, now it's really off, and this is only hurdle number two. So what would hurdle number three be like? Off even more, and now not even halfway into the race and the form is just off, 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 off. All right. And so my objective, my goal through these next few sessions is to improve this lead arm. All right. I want the swing to continue just like this, right through the hurdle, not a single deviation from this. All right. And so how am I going to go doing this? All right. With the one step drill, all right, over the middle, with the hurdles very low. All right, we can see here this is 24 inches. All right, the next one is 27 inches, and then the last one there's 30 inches. And this is the movement I need to replicate over and over again. Because I need to be comfortable moving into the hurdle with the lead arm swinging as it does when I sprint. All right, and so I need to keep this lead arm, but I need this elbow swinging forward more so like it would in a normal sprint. And this I need to control a little more. That's not so bad because it's relaxation, but the angles are off and it's just a few 0.03 percentage of an energy point. All right, if we have 100 energy points, I use that much right there. And if it's over 10 hurdles, it adds up and that's just one limb all right and there are more energy points being lost because the lean is too upright and because this is a bracing because this this swing is an opening more so all right and this slight um movement of the hand and this knee not getting higher all right and so these are all 0 0.03 percentage of a point all right and so it adds up all right and this is over low hurdles so I have a very long way to go before I can 
honestly expect it to look how I want it to look over these 39 inch hurdles. All right, that's 30 inches. This one in the middle is 27 and this first one is 24. So this is good, except the elbow is still flaring out a little bit right here. It's coming to the left. And I want the, ex the same exact movement that I have when I sprint when there's no hurdle in the way. That's the movement I need to get comfortable with. And when I can execute it over these little hurdles, I can move up to 33 inches and 36 inches and 39 inches. And then eventually to 42 inches. And if I want to display it full speed in a race at 42 inches, I need to execute it the way I want to in this drill before it can ever happen at full speed. All right, there could be more extension here into the hurdle, more extension through this hip here before the foot leaves the ground. That is because the hurdles are low, so you can kind of cheat your way over them and that's what happens. All right, but more importantly, more lean, more lean, more knee drive, straight up. I'm still having the sensation of going forward. I want everything coming up and down. Everything is up and down, up and down. The lean forces forward and the feet making contact underneath and behind the hip force forward, but you're not you're not actually consciously trying to do it, all right? Your focus is swinging the arms up and down, driving the knees up and down, and driving the foot dorsiflexed up and down. It's never forward, it's never forward, it's never forward. All right, forward is the illusion when you're doing things right. All right, so that I did two reps with every single one that I recorded. The next ones don't open up, so I won't take a look at them. But it's the same thing. Same thing, just higher height, so the technique falls off. We don't have to see that. All right, last one here. I want this elbow staying in, not flaring out to the left. And I want the elbow moving forward more so. All right, because I have to get comfortable through that movement pattern. And I need thousands of reps before I can come back here and expect to see it at full speed. So hurdle one was okay. And at hurdle two, lead arm starts opening up way early. Look at this. That's behind. That's going behind the body to then come in front. And that's opposite of what I'm trying to get out of this um, lead arm. All right. One more time in slow motion. I use quick time when I want to go slow motion. All right, because then you can use the arrow keys to go left and right. Come on. All right, let's see if this one opens. All right, I guess not. Let's see if this one opens. All right, so very quickly in slow motion, here's what we're, here's what we're looking to do. Keep this lead arm, left arm here, swinging 100% naturally into and over the hurdle. No deviations. And the deviation starts right here. We're going to say right here, I'm starting to see the elbow, I mean the shoulder rise. All right. Deviation, because that's no longer swinging. The elbow starting to come wide and the hand starting to um, twist. Now it's off a little more, shoulders a little up more, more so. And because of the upper body, the hips are not off alignment. Right. Maybe you can't see it because of the sweatpants, but it's there. And then upon landing, it's late. Like, I didn't generate any any power through this trail leg. It might look like it's decent because it's in it's in good position and facing forward and ready to run off the herd, but it's not because I'm not generating speed from the lead leg or the trail leg here. It's just good movements over the hurdle. This would not this would not be good enough to win races, you know, on a global level. Locally, at the state level, sure. Maybe, you know, competing against some national guys. But, you know, if I were to compete at the level that I wanted to, this wouldn't, this wouldn't cut it. Because it's not just the movements being there. But then actually moving through that full range of motion. Because it's at that last little percentage. Boom! Then you get, then you get all of the force. Alright? So just like this. I got my hand here. Alright? So I have my hand and I want to I want to fling something. Alright? So let's say I want to fling this pencil here across the room. Alright? I can hold it here and then release it and it will go flying across. 
flying across, all right? As opposed to me holding it and wanting to throw it far, it won't go very far, all right? But if I do this, it goes all the way across the room. And that's what we have to do through the hip into the hurdle, all right? So what we're trying to do, all right, is do this right here, fling, all right, through the hip here. All right, so where the leg connects to the hip, if we don't go through full range of motion, we don't get this effect. Instead, we only get this much effect right here. And the rest was our effort, our muscle trying to get us over. All right, that's what happens when you don't go through full range of motion. And it's the same thing with the arm. All right, if the arm doesn't swing all the way back and then get kicked forward, then same thing what we did through the shoulder is we came this far through and then we got this much free energy and the rest was our muscles and our intention and, uh, and all this extra effort and we're trying to eliminate that through being good sprinters and being good hurdlers and knowing our craft all right full range of motion gets you the most and then you add on everything else that you're doing all the extra effort all right and so we need full, full range of motion through this hip and through this ankle here, all right? Because this is providing speed right here, and so is this hip joint. Boom, right there, all right? And so are these shoulders right here. By this elbow swinging back and this elbow swinging forward and this knee driving up, when they all reach this point, you have produced your max speed. All right, and if you continually do that, you end up running races and running much faster. And if you continue shortening yourself, all right, by rushing the process and not going through full range of motion, you just you simply don't get what you could have gotten. And it's the same thing with this lean here. All right, there's an angle that's efficient and not fighting gravity. And this isn't it, because this angle, all right. At this hip, there's tension here, all right? From the forward lean, they just hold you back just a little bit. Every hurdle, just a little hold you back. Just a little hold you back. Just a little hold you back. And if you didn't have that slight tension there, and you had a slightly better forward lean and zero resistance against gravity going over this hurdle, now every single hurdle gets that small percentage removed, which means you're running faster. And it's not because I increase my foot speed, it's because I'm moving through better positions over these hurdles. All right, and so that's what I'm trying to do here. All right, and so I need to execute better here, extending more into the air. I'm gonna need to raise the hurdles, because if not, I'm just gonna be cheating, you know, because it's too easy to subconsciously do it. All right, and then I need to hit these angles. This heel needs to rise here and this foot needs to be completely, complete. like this toe needs to still be on the ground. That's how much extension I'm trying to create into this hurdle, all right? And then this forward lead needs to be non-resistant, all right? And these arms need to hit full range of motion, and that's it. And I need to execute that thousands of times. And when I do, you see the technique looks better. And you see my technique looks pretty good now because I have done these throughout the years thousands of reps recorded you see these recordings this is nothing compared to the reps i had when i was out there competing and recording myself so look at this lean upright upright now i lean all extra late too late this lean needs to be there before i leave the ground this elbow needs to swing forward more all right dorsiflexion is good the foot is still landing you know pretty good underneath the hip but the forward lean is too upright I get some good and I get some bad and it balances out. I didn't get any get any forward acceleration out of it. All right, and so <clears throat> and so everything counts. All right, and so that's the quick lesson for today. I'm gonna keep doing these one-step drills to perfect them just over the middle. It doesn't have to be, you know, the more you know advanced way. And we're gonna go seeing here in these next few weeks the improvements that I make. I'm not trying to compete. All right, I don't have any plans to do any kind of racing. But I want to show you, you know, how much better it can get when you do things right. You take the time to put in the reps, you get the improvements, and we're going to see that here in the next few weeks. All right, questions, comments, let me know. 
head on over to the hurdle magazine for your 14 day free trial of the hurdle magazine just an overwhelming amount of hurdles training content if you want to run faster head to the hurdle i will speak to you next time run faster make them chase you